All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about section 7.3. Now, 7.3 talks about double angle formulas, or the book lists them as double angle formulas. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, it really is no different than what uh, all the other formulas we've had. Um, so let me just summarize for you all the stuff we have dealt with. So here's a summary for you. We've had the Pythagorean identities. What are the Pythagorean identities? Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one and you can manipulate this by dividing all by cosine you get this version of it you can divide everything by sine you get this version of it okay so these are your Pythagorean identities okay then the uh, in the last video I actually instructed you about the sum angle or difference angle formulas okay so the sum angle is pretty nice Okay, so I'm just writing them out. Please uh, take a look at the last video if you have any questions, but I do think this is a uh, highly beneficial if you do take a look at it. Oh my goodness, I hate writing these out. They're so awful. Not awful. It's just tough for me to to be writing all this stuff down. Okay, and then finally, and literally the other two we really need is cosine. Of alpha plus beta which is cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta ooh that is a terrible handwriting um, and then we have cosine of a minus B which is equal to cosine of a cosine of B minus uh, plus sorry sine of a sine of B all right so that's all the guys you've learned well <clears throat> what about this idea of this guy and I'm sure you've seen this before what is sine of two thetas so basically two angles are the same well what does two theta really mean that means sine of theta plus theta that's what two of anything means right so if we use the sum angle formula a and b are both thetas in this case right so we end up getting sine of theta cosine of theta plus sine of theta cosine of theta so basically a and b are all thetas so notice we have two of these here which is two sine of theta cosine of theta so this is the formula you would use to transform uh, the double angle formula of sine into single angles okay um, it's a very very helpful trick <coughs> excuse me and we can also do the same thing what cosine of two theta okay if I take cosine of two theta let's look at the sum angle formula for cosine of two theta well this is just cosine of theta plus theta equals so this is cosine of theta cosine of theta plus oh shoosh minus sine of theta sine of theta this equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta so notice and the whole point is, is to transform double angles into single angles now, yes, some of you guys are ringing your head. Cosine squared to sine squared looks very familiar. It should, because other than this version, we could use the Pythagorean identity and combine it with this and come up with two other versions of this. And since we know that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, and vice versa, if I just, then I'm going to plug this in for cosine squared theta. Right, so this is version 1. We'll call this V1. V2 is if I plug it in, I end up getting 1 minus sine squared theta minus the sine squared theta. This gives me 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, so this is the second version of what cosine of 2 theta could be. It could be this guy, or it could be this guy. Okay, and then last but not least, there's a version 3. And you're probably going to say, well, how do you get version 3? Well, you get version 3 by converting instead of an all in the sine you convert all in the cosines how do you do that well you solve for sine first okay so if i solve for sine that's just one minus cosine squared theta and i plug it in like glade so i'm going to use version one again and plug in sine squared theta in for that so it gives me cosine squared theta watch the birdie there's a subtraction sign here one minus cosine squared theta and this is equal to two cosine squared theta minus one now why is this beneficial because if we're doing identities and you have cosines you might not want to use the one that has sine in it 
make good sense okay so this is version three so this guy is equal to one two or three and the choice is totally up to you so <clears throat> let me give you a quick caution real quick okay and i'll rewrite the double angle formulas out again so you see them in clearness okay caution if you have cosine of 2 theta or sine of 2 theta, this is not the same as saying 2 cosine of thetas. It's really easy to think that, okay? But it is not the case, okay? Same thing with sine. If you have sine of 2 theta, that's not equal to uh, so, uh, 2 sine of theta. All right? So please keep that in mind. So back to our double angle formulas, okay? If I have sine of 2 theta, we just found out. This is the same thing, 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. And if I have cosine of 2 theta, I got three options to choose from. I have the conventional one, which has sines and cosines in it, all single angle. I have the non-conventional one, which after I use Pythagorean identity and substitute stuff in, has nothing but sines in it, but I have two sines of theta. And likewise, I have one where if I substitute in for cosines, oops, that looks terrible, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay, so those are all three different versions of this guy that you can possibly do. Now, which one do you use? The one that is most comfortable for you and for the problem. Okay, so let's do a quick example so we feel pretty comfortable. Okay, here's an example for you. It says... If you know the sine of theta, sine is the y, is 4 fifths, and the tangent of theta is less than 0. So if tangent theta is less than 0, uh, it's negative, correct? Okay, now this is your job. Your job is to find, okay, sine of 2 theta, and I want you to find cosine of 2 theta. First thing you do when you have when you have double angles, you always transfer them back into single angles through the formula. Well, for sine, we know this is two cosine of theta, sine of theta, or vice versa, same difference. If you notice, I wrote it backwards, but multiplication is commutative, but life's okay, so I can do that. All right, so now we, it just turns to the other problem. I need to find out where cosine of theta and sine of theta is, okay? So let's figure out where we live. Now, good news is, is we kind of already know what sine of theta is because they gave it to us. But let's say they didn't give it to us, okay? This is how we would compute it, all right? So sine, where is sine equal to 4 fifths at, okay? So where's the y 4 fifths? Where's the y fifth, y positive? First and second. Where's the tangent negative? Second and fourth. So where do we have to be living? The second quadrant. Here's my theta. Okay, so now we know that the sine of theta is 4 over 5, which means that after you do Pythagorean theorem, this has to be a 3. Pythagorean theorem is going to be a big piece of your pie. You notice I didn't even do it at this point in time. You guys can do that on your own and figure out what that side of this right triangle is. Okay, so now that we know this, I can tell you that the cosine is 3 fifths. Remember, in this quadrant, the cosine, since we're in 2, cosine of theta, even though it's 3 fifths, is negative, right? Because we're in the second quadrant, right? The x's are negative here. Likewise, the sine is 4 fifths. So this is going to be equal to, what is that? Negative 24 over 25. And check this out. The lowest that sine can be is negative 1. It's close to negative 1, but it's not negative 1. Check that out, all right? Let's check out cosine of 2 theta. Well, cosine of 2 theta, now this is where you get to be... Uh, you get to be very creative. Since we already have the triangle already already drawn, you get the option. Well, pick one. It doesn't matter which one you choose of, of these three, okay? Um, but sometimes, they already, since they already gave me this, and let's say I, I didn't have this, and I didn't draw the triangle, they just gave me that, I would probably use the one with sine. Why? Because I wouldn't have to do any work. Sine of theta, and notice how I wrote it, sine of theta squared, because we already know sine of theta. Sine of theta is four-fifths. And then I can just solve. 1 minus 2, uh, 2 times 16 over 25. That is 1 minus 32 over 25. Let's find the CD. That's 25 over 25 minus 32 over 25. All right, magic question. What is 25 minus 32? Answer, negative 7 over 25. So that's what cosine of 2 theta is. Let's do it again, and let's let's actually use a different one, just so you can see how it really works out. 
Okay, let's do it again, but instead I'm going to use this guy up top. Cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. So, cosine of 2 theta is cosine squared theta. So if I find a cosine squared, I get that, and sine squared theta. Okay, now note, yes, I could put the 2 out here and make it feel warm and fuzzy inside. All right, so you get the sine is 4 fifths. The cosine of theta, on the other hand, though, well, what are you going to do there? Well, you got to consult your triangle. Cosine is 3 fifths, right? So this gives me 9 over 25 minus um, 16 over, did I do that right? 16 over 25. I think I might have boobooed this up somewhere. Uh, maybe not. This gives me negative 7 over 25. Notice the answers match. I just couldn't subtract for a second there. All right. So no matter which one you use, you should end up with the exact same answer. All right. But guess what? We can also use all these formulas to prove identities as well. Let's prove some. Okay. We'll do one, and then we will uh, then we'll call it the day with this video. Okay. So check it out. Let's say it said show two. 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, 2x, 2 theta, is equal to secant squared x. All right, so here's a big point, big point, and I'm going to highlight this point with a red. See this angle? One's a double angle, one's a single angle. All the angles must match, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do this. So you're going to have to find a way. So first thing I'm going to do is I need to convert this cosine. Now note, if you're smart, you got three different options with cosine. Secant is who? Secant is 1 over cosine, right? So I'm probably going to use the version of cosine of 2x um, that has the most cosines in it. So what's that version? That's cosine of uh, 2x. That's the same thing as saying 1 is cosine 2 of those squared theta minus 1. Remember this? Okay, we just had it up here. All right, so with that being said... Let's go ahead and attempt to push through this, okay? So this gives me 2 over 1, and hopefully I didn't jank anything up, 2 cosine squared x minus 1. That's in my denominator. 1's drop. This gives you 2 over 2 cosine squared. Oh, this works out pretty good. Uh, 2 over 2 is just 1 over cosine squared x. And what is 1 over cosine squared x? That's secant squared x. Bingo. That wasn't that bad. Okay, very, very, very not bad. All right, let's do one more. I know the video is running a little longer than I would have anticipated, but I figured this would be good practice. Do 2 sine of x plus sine of 2x, not sine squared x, 2x over 2. And I want to show that this side is equal to sine cubed x over 1 minus cosine of x. Okay, pause the video and go at it. Go at it now. All right, so you probably have already worked it out a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this and see what's going on. Notice all your angles are single angles except for this creature. He needs to be converted first. We only got one option for sine of two uh, x. What's the one option? Well, that one option for this guy is um, the one option for this guy is two sine x cosine x and that's all over two look at how all the twos are going to go away and that's going to leave so if you factor out your twos you're going to end up getting sine of x plus sine of x cosine x and we can even factor out our sine of x okay this this particular problem oh, let me move this crap out the way this particular problem has um, a good deal of stuff in it. And what do I mean by a good deal of stuff in it? We're going to have to do some miracles here. So you see some a sine of x here? We can kind of already pull that sine of x out the top here. And it leaves me a sine squared x that I got to get rid of. Well, guys, think about it. When have you seen the sine squared x? When we use the Pythagorean identity. What is sine squared x? Take a second, think about it. It's 1 minus cosine squared x over 1 minus cosine of x. All right, what's the magic magic piece of the puzzle? This is the difference of squares. So this is sine of x, 1 minus cosine of x, 1 plus cosine of x, all over 1 minus cosine of x. 
this factor and yickety our left side equals our right side. So this thing equals this thing. So I know this guy and this guy must be the same. It's really that simple. Okay, guys, enjoy. I really, really, uh, really enjoy. Uh,